In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Where is God's house? We are God's house wherever we are, however we are assembled, for God in Christ is with us. Today's Old Testament reading contains the establishment of the Davidic covenant. And this is extremely important to Jews and to Christians. But it is actually kind of a funny back and forth between King David, his prophet Nathan, and God. We see King David um, in a time of prosperity and peace. He has won many military victories and just built himself a beautiful home, a home of cedar. However, God is still worshipped uh, in tent and tabernacle. And David may have many flaws, but he loves God. And he thinks he now should build God a house, create finally a temple. It's the kind of thing we do in times of peace and, and prosperity. But David sort of forgets whom of, that he's thinking about, <laughs> who, who it is he speaks of, the creator of the cosmos, the source of all being. And uh, God, through the prophet Nathan, takes David back to a time of crisis for the Israelites, reminds him of God's own identity from that time when they escaped slavery, wandered in the wilderness. God says, I have moved about among all the people. I have been with you wherever you went. In their time of crisis, God was revealed as transcendent, as the creator of all things, and yet intimately at their side, walking with them, um, with them where they had to go. Last Advent, we could not have imagined the year that we have had. We have been very accustomed, as we were last Advent, to, in our times of peace and prosperity, meeting God in our church, in our place of worship. We would come to God's house to worship God. This time of year, we would have been greening the church, maybe. I mean, I don't know how, how legalistic you are um, at Grace Church and Trinity Church about when do we put up any greens, when do we take off the purple, but we would have been in God's house, focused there, greens, polishing brass, getting out the poinsettias, where's the, the baby for the creche, and it would have been in, in God's house. And yet, this year, we find ourselves in a time of crisis. Now, to us, I think it feels like woe is us. Nobody's gone through this before. But in reality, many people <laughs> since the Israelites have had to come in times of crises to realize uh, that God is not in our buildings that this God of the Israelites who traveled with them is traveling with us. I hope and pray that you have found God where you are, where you are right now. That God is not contained in the house of worship. God is with you. I was thinking about uh, these two churches and uh, their rather deep histories. I think one was maybe 1881 and 1888, perhaps. 
And I thought about the people who came to the prairie states, to the Great Plains in those, in those kind of years, in the 1860s, 70s. And I can imagine that they, they too were stripped suddenly. It was kind of a crisis of their own creation <laughs> to choose to come to Kansas. But can you imagine coming here um, from Massachusetts or Connecticut or maybe the South uh, from New Orleans, something like that. And, and all the things that you were used to, the places you went to find God, were not there. there there's a marvelous photo that some of you may have seen of um, St. John's in Wichita, First Church in Wichita. And you've got you know, a, little, a little girl in lace and boots and women in hats. And they're standing in front of this sort of lean-to of slats, right, with a, with a cross. And you can just barely see, you know, prairie grass and nothing else. And yet, they knew. They might got gone into that structure uh, to get out of the sun, I think, probably in August. But God was not contained in that building. God had traveled the prairies with them. God will be close to God's people. Uh, I have recently been reading this uh, book uh, about Bonhoeffer, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who was a theologian um, in Germany who was um, against Nazism and really worked with others for the assassination of Adolf Hitler, a very difficult thing ethically for him to wrestle with. And I was reading from when he was in prison, and he was very conscious that many of the things that he had leaned on, the structures, uh, were stripped from him in that, in that prison of war. Um, he wrote about how he no longer, let me see if I can read it to you, he missed the Eucharist. He says, uh, after these long months without worship, penitence, and Eucharist, and without the consolatio fratrum, which I learned is the, there, there were people who would write letters in Germany when you lost someone at the time of a funeral. It was a very important ritual and sense of the community being there when you were um, seeing death, which you, we can only imagine how much death he saw in those camps. He says that all that's been taken from me, and yet uh, I have not, I am preserved from any serious spiritual trial he experienced God with him. The God of the Israelites was with Bonhoeffer, um, even in that situation. No more spires, no German corrals, no theological debates. But this is a God who comes to us wherever we are. And I give thanks in, in some ways, despite our deep suffering, that the, the crisis of this pandemic reveals to us this God who travels with us, reminds us that God is not contained in these four walls as beautiful as they are, and they are beautiful. Um, we are reminded that God is not here contained, that we, too, have discovered God in all these new um, and exciting ways. God is both transcendent, the creator of all things, and yet so near to us. Uh, today in the courtyard, um, I saw it. It snowed, which was a great gift. I love the snow. It was a, a little bit of a curveball. But you did this beautiful witness of showing up and turning out to pray because God is, is with us where we need to be. And that's um, what happens in this, this second Samuel passage is a great turn 
And it's all in a turn of phrase where God says to Nathan and to David, no, 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 you're not going to build me a house. I am making of you a house. And that's a double entendre in the Hebrew, which means I'm going to make of you, David, a family, a lineage, so that the house of God is going to be within the community of the faithful, is going to be within the, the people of God in our relationships with one another and with the living one, with God, God's self. Um, this is where God dwells. And what we know from the beautiful Magnificat, from what we heard of the angel Gabriel coming to Mary, Mary, this, this very humble human being, is, is knit into David's family, into David's house. And from her will come Jesus, the cornerstone. This one, Jesus Christ, builds each of us on who he is. And I think Bonhoeffer got to a really interesting place. From his time in prison, he was able to say, we need to not limit God. God is not in the little corners we want to give to God. God is in this prison camp. God is in our villages. And God makes of God's people a house that we are a family united moving out into the world to bring God's habitation there, to bring the gospel to those who don't know it, to weave them into this family because it is uh, wherever we are that God is. Uh, I think you've been singing it, praying it, O come, O come, Emmanuel, claiming that knowledge that God is with us. Blessed Advent, blessed Christmas, uh, the other 43 parishes of the Diocese of Kansas, are pray uh, 42, <laughs> are praying for you both, both of your parishes. Uh, blessed Advent, blessed Christmas. Amen. <laughs>